Um, greetings and salutation. Um, we are covering in chapter 2. We'll begin with paragraph 5. Let's get started. Materialism can never offer a satisfactory explanation of the world. For every attempt at an explanation must begin with the formation of thoughts about the phenomena of the world. Materialism thus begins with the thought of matter or material process. But in doing so, it is already confronted by two different sets of facts, the material world and the thoughts about it. The materialist seeks to make these matters intelligible by regarding them as purely material processes. He believes that thinking takes place in the brain, much in the same way that digestion takes place in the animal organs. Just as he attributes mechanical and organic effects to matter, so he credits matter in, circumstances, in certain circumstances with the capacity to think. He overlooks that, in doing so, he is merely shifting the problem from one place to another. He ascribes the power of thinking to matter instead of to himself, and thus he is back again at his starting point. How does, it, how does matter come to think about its own nature? Why is it not simply satisfied with itself and content just to exist? The materialist has turned his attention away from the definite subject, his own eye, and has, and has arrived at an image of something quite vague and indefinite. Here the old riddle meets him again. The materialistic conception cannot solve the problem. It can only shift it from one place to another. Um, the summary for that is... Materialists ascribe the capacity to think to matter, rather than themselves. But how can matter think about its own existence? Thus the problem is displaced, not solved. Um, for Steiner, um, the, actually this book is called Philosophy of Freedom, um, but it also is called Intuitive Thinking as Spiritual Activity, um, and that title kind of explains Steiner's opinion that thinking is a spiritual act um a lot of people think um thinking is just a, as a result of a chemical process and you know i guess that's debatable um i personally think steiner might be right about things because um from a materialistic point of view um when people are studying people's brain activity when they're thinking, I mean, that's just monitoring what's going on. I mean, that, that, that still does not prove that thinking is a material activity. It's just merely showing that these chemicals or processes are going on when one person is thinking. Um, but we do live in a materialistic age, and so people automatically would think, well, oh, thinking is just because this is going on. That's all what thinking is. But um, Steiner does not believe that. Um, I don't really know how much in his day, how much brain research they've done because, you know, he was born um, 1867 and died 1925. So they probably were just starting. They, he, they didn't have probably the, the level of research that we probably have now about what's going on in the brain. But he does make a valid point, and I, I'm sure there's lots of people today who still think, you know, this whole idea is debatable about whether thinking is materialistic or not. Um, so let me go on to paragraph 6. Um, what of the spiritualistic theory? The genu genuine spiritualist denies to matter all independent existence and regards it me merely as a product of spirit. But when he tries to use this theory to solve the riddle of his own human nature, he finds himself driven into a corner. Over against the eye or ego, which can be ranged on the side of spirit, there stands directly the world of the senses. No spiritual approach to it seems open. Only with the help of material processes can it be perceived and experienced by the eye. Such material, such material processes 
the eye does not discover in itself so long as it regards its own nature as exclusively spiritual in what it achieves spiritually by its own effort the sense perceptible world is never to be found it seems as if the eye had to concede that the world would be a closed book to it unless it could establish a non-spiritual relation to the world similarly when it comes to action we have to translate our purposes into realities with the help of material things and forces we are therefore referred back to the outer world the most extreme spiritualist or rather the thinker who through his absolute idealism appears as extreme spiritualist is Johann Gottlieb Fichte he attempts to derive the whole edifice of the world from the eye what he actually accomplished is a magnificent thought picture of the world without any content of experience as little as it is possible for the materialist to argue the spirit away just as little is it possible for the spiritualist to, to argue away the outer world of matter. Um, the summary we have for that is pure spiritualists consider matter as a product of spirit. However, the sensory world must be seen and felt by the eye through material processes. Um, I think the last sentence basically is sums up what this paragraph is, which is um, a materialist cannot, you know, you cannot as a materialist argue away the spirit, and as a spiritualist, you cannot argue away the world of matter. And I think um, any, t I think if you've gone into any sort of um, Buddhist thought or whatnot. Um, I've read a little, but um, and this for me personally is what I've experienced. My own sort of, um, you kind of start thinking the the word illusion. You think, oh, the the material world, you know, that's not really there. You know, it's an illusion, but it doesn't mean that. I mean, the material world is real, and I mean it's. It seems pretty obvious, but it is there. We can't say that's an illusion, but to just believe that the material world is all there is, that's where the illusion lies. The illusion does not lie in material materialism. Um, it doesn't mean, you know, objects aren't real. They are real. They're, you know, if I, I'm on the 16th floor of my apartment, if I jump, I'm probably going to die. That's the, the reality. That's the materialism. And, and that's um you can't argue that away i mean that is physical and there there is that reality so um you have to you know realize you can't argue spirit or matter they both exist so let's stop arguing about it <laughs> okay um i'm going to stop it there because um we're we're gonna we're gonna get this done people so uh i'll see you next time um goodbye